Uh, there is a show after you are done watching this live stream, you may want to check it out. Um, it is called Let Us Pray with an E, a ministry of scandals. And it's a four part docuseries that airs tonight and tomorrow night on Investigation Discovery, which is a true crime network usually. But instead of covering like wives with knives, they've decided, you know, where all the crimes are taking place in church. And so, you know, one of the perks of being on YouTube writing about this stuff is I got early access to the whole series. And so I watched it this week. And I mean, I don't think I'm giving anything away here that's that's not in the show itself, but I, I really appreciated it. I will tell you about the show in just a second. But the thing I want to uh, it, talk about really here is this is not an unusual type of docuseries because think about what we've had in the past few months in terms of series that focus on Christian extremism in some way, right? There was Shiny Happy People, which was on Amazon Prime Video, which is all about the Duggars and the Christian community they grew up in. And it kind of exposed them as these, I mean, the whole church came off looking horrible. And the people trying to defend that vision of patriarchy did not look good either, right? So that was Shiny Happy People. That got a lot of buzz. I mean, I've seen so many articles about that. There was Savior Complex on HBO. I think that was last month. And that was about the missionary who went to, I believe, Uganda because she wanted to help people. But she was not a doctor, not a nurse, but she cosplayed as one and took in kids with malnutrition. And a lot of kids died under her care. And that series uh, kind of it talks to her, talks to the people criticizing her. That was fascinating. There's also right now The Mission, which is on National Geographic, about John Allen Chow who is that Christian missionary who decided several years ago, I'm going to go to North Sentinel Island nearby India, and I'm going to try to preach to this tribe that has had no human contact ever. Like they're just an isolated tribe and you are forbidden by law from, from coming to their island. But this dude went in a boat near the island. And I think the way it worked out is the, the inhabitants of that island saw him, assumed correctly, that he's an outsider, and then probably shot him. Um, but he was going there because he thought they needed to hear about Jesus. Um, like just a stupid, stupid decision that was written off by some Christians as well. He's a martyr for the cause. But that's also another series that's on uh, TV or streaming right now. And now we can talk about this one, Let Us Pray. And all of these series are basically using Christian denominations some mainstream, some kind of fringy, but to show people like, this is what people actually believe. This is not one dude making a bad decision. This is a whole community of people uh, doing this stuff. I, I see a comment someone made. I do want to address this. This is a fair, fair comment. I said, no human contact are the inhabitants, not human. Fair point, fair point. The people on that island that John Allen Chow went to, yeah, they're human. They're no outsider contact. Like there is, I think, law in India that says, no one is allowed to go to that island because obviously if someone like us in the U.S. went to that island, we are bringing our diseases there. They don't have natural immunity to it. They don't have vaccines or anything like that. So it would essentially our them being exposed to other people could kill them off. And so the government prevents people from uh, seeing them. But the thing I appreciate about these series is that it brings all of these stories that I think all of you, as people watching this live stream, as atheists, as church state separation people, we know a lot of these stories. We've heard a lot of these stories. Maybe you grew up in communities like this. And to have these stories brought to a wider audience who, who might be watching it for pure entertainment value, but it is a documentary or it's a docuseries, so they are learning stuff. Like, I'm so glad this stuff is being brought to them. Um, and the women in Let Us Pray, it's almost all women uh, focused on in this series. They share their horrific stories as part of the independent fundamentalist, uh, independent fundamental Baptist movement, the IFB churches. That's who they are in Let Us Pray. And they talk about the abuse that they suffered. 
They talk about their efforts to try to get justice and try to bring these predatory pastors um, some accountability and how hard it is. Sometimes it works. A lot of times it doesn't. But if you're not familiar with this IFB sect, you hear stories of purity culture, sexual grooming by pastors, um, unearned trust given by these survivors' own families to the religious leaders in their churches. And it's shocking. It's horrifying to hear their stories. And I want to point out, this is not a fringe group of people who are IFB members. We are talking about 6,000 churches across the country. Some are small, some are not. That's roughly 8 million members across the country. And some of the names might be familiar if you know anything about IFB churches. Jack Hiles, Jack Scopp, Boyd and Stephanie Householder, Bruce Goddard. These are not household names, uh, no pun intended there. Not household names, but if you are part of the IFB community, you might be familiar with them. And if you followed like fundamentalist Christians for years, you've definitely heard of some of these people. Um, they also uh, spoke to a reporter, Sarah Smith, who is a journalist for the, uh, I think, Houston Star-Telegram in Texas. But she wrote articles exposing a lot of the sexual misconduct in these churches and all their affiliated institutions. And let me just tell you some of the stories you hear in these in this series, by the way. There is one woman who describes the way predatory pastors are kind of moved from church to church. She described it as the pedophile shuffle, which is a horrifying name for that. That, that thing has a name when bad pastors just move from church to church. Um, there was one pastor who was mentioned in here who gifted a 15-year-old girl a teddy bear because she had said she never had one growing up. So he gives her a bag that has a teddy bear in it, and it has special underwear just for her. And the woman is on screen, and she says later on, he gives her a call and asks, and I'm quoting here, are you wearing the panties to an underage girl? The series also speaks with Amanda Householder, who is a woman who talked about her own abusive parents and how they ran this Christian boarding school that was extremely uh, abusive. She turned her own parents in to authorities. And to his credit, a Republican uh, uh, attorney general, I think it was Eric Schmidt in Missouri, he's the one who went after them. Like, good for him. Broken clock, right twice a day sort of thing. But like, good. There's one IFB member, former IFB member, who says every IFB church is a powder keg ready to explode. Like just because there's all this bad stuff happening in all of them. Um, one of the ways a victim describes these churches, she says, when women are being told they have no power and when men are given all the power, it's a perfect storm for sexual abuse. Um, there was another woman in the series who said of her pastor, I hate that he was my first everything because he sexually abused her because he did stuff to her. And she had to deal with that for years later. And again, the, the point of the series is not to say that every IFB church harbors predators. They don't. It's that the institution is so broken that predators are able to roam basically freely among these churches because they know they'll avoid accountability. And it's that the women in these churches are taught to be submissive and obedient and to suppress their sexuality, which is the ingredients you need for predators to pounce. It's that their families and friends were led to believe the pastors could do no wrong, which only exacerbated the problem. So I am so grateful that these women spoke for the series. I'm grateful the series happened. And I love, I love's the wrong word to use for something this horrifying, but I do love that there's that this stuff is getting out into the mainstream because it means there is an audience eager to hear fair criticism, at least real criticism, of these faith-based institutions and their beliefs. I mean, it's hard to come away from these series with more sympathy for these religions, these denominations. Um, and again, the fact that this particular series is on investigation discovery, which is a true crime thing, like that's just, that tells you how far the church has fallen, at least certain denominations. So again, it's airing this weekend. I'm sure it'll be streaming somewhere. It's called Let Us Pray, P-R-E-Y. And uh, I, I think you should check it out. 
Um, it is horrifying, but sometimes you need to watch the scary stuff so you know what we're actually dealing with. So I'll leave it at that.